thanks again. Yeah, starting. So thanks again for uh, for um, spending time with us um, and presenting us uh, your work. I, I think that the motivation for this was uh, that a recurring thing in this group is that a lot of people are trying to do similar things and uh, related to research, and that can be um, like deploying HPC like uh, systems or patch systems or I don't know notebooks or whatever service uh, serves their communities. And uh, one of the issues they have is uh, not only navigating the CNCF landscape, but understanding what are best practices for for these different use cases. So attending your group's presentation, I think there was kind of uh, similar goals. And uh, so I think it would be great if you can describe uh, your group to our community and, um, and then I'm sure other people will have questions. Awesome. So I have just a, let's see, a few slides to support the conversation, but we promise it won't be death by slides. Um, so Simon, do you want to just kind of start us off? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you, Danielle. So um, uh, Danielle and myself, along with John Foreman, are co-chairs of the Cartographos uh, Working Group. Um, and we uh, started to collate the model uh, also with, with Robert Glenn, also who's, who, who's um, been collaborating with us also. So we formed the working group approximately a, a year ago uh, just to start working on a, a cloud native uh, maturity model. Uh, I'm based in London, Danielle's in, and the others are in the US. Yep. Okay, so why, why have a maturity model? Uh, this came out of um, a uh, out of something that we had all independently observed, um, which is that uh, we have the cloud native landscape and the CNCF also has the cloud native trail map. And uh, one of the first challenges for anybody encountering the landscape at first glance is first off, it's a real eye test. And then secondly, where do I start? What's my path? We'd observed that the trail map was in place, but it was very uh, at a very high level, and um, uh, it uh, didn't give much guidance, and at worst, it could be misleading. And uh, so um, I put together an attempt at a trail map. Danielle had also produced one, and uh, likewise, John. And so we all uh, collaborated together. The main thing that we want to illustrate with the trail map is we want to show levels of maturity and also uh, um, provide a, a path through which people can slowly attain cloud native maturity. We also uh, wanted to um, have multiple, uh, we believe that there are multiple factors involved in this. So we really wanted to, to help, um, provide tools to help adopters and end users navigate the landscape in the wider cloud native ecosystem. And so as we've got there, we want to help people move from inception through to full adoption of cloud native technologies using the landscape. Uh, yeah. Next slide, please. Yep. Yeah. Um, right. Um, Danielle, I think, uh, would you like to? Yep. So our, um, just for an overview of the maturity model. So we have five different stages that we, so when we were coming together, we took these different models, looked at them and was like, okay, how do we break this up and make sense of this? And so we came to the realization that there were kind of five main stages and this is what this represents. And it's, you know, the first stage is when you're building out you know, your environment, then you're learning how to run it and you're figuring out how to move to production. Then stage three, you're scaling. Four, now that you figured out, okay, scale, you're gonna go back and revisit things and look to improve some of the decisions you made early on. And then in five, it's all about optimization and like what tweaks you can get for measuring and your metrics and monitoring and all of that. So within each five stages, for each five stage, we also broke it down to four key themes. 
So people, process, policy, and technology. So the people theme looks at, well, what do you need to do culturally at your organization in each phase of the model? So, you know, in the beginning, you need to get the people on board to decide like, yeah, I'm, I want to do cloud native, I'm bought in. And, you know, you need to then, as you move through, like change the structure of your teams, maybe um, look at how, who's leading, adopt, make sure you're adopting this DevOps culture, et cetera. The process, again, follows the five stages and that looks at, you know, what do you need to put in place for CICD, your infrastructure's code? Like, are you shifting everything left? Um, policy focuses on what policies can you, do you need to put in place? What compliance mandates do you need to follow? Um, and, you know, how can you automate this? And then technology is really where it, we're suggesting like, okay, here are the tools you can use. Now in the technology section, we have decided we would only include CNCF graduated projects or incubating projects. So we did not include any sandbox projects just because, you know, that's where people are trialing it. We, you know, we don't know if it's going to make the cut in the end. Um, and we wanted to make sure we had a clear cutoff point. We also don't talk about any commercial software. So you have to be open source. You have to be in the CNCF to be included. Um, now, what we're doing today or at the moment is we're going out to each of the tags within the CNCF and looking for their expertise around the technology, but also like are there areas in people process and policy where they could enhance that, but in the techno technology section, looking at recommendations for these are the technologies you need to be looking at. And that may include some of the projects, but they may also just include some themes around, you should be looking for software to help you with this, that, and the other. So we did, you know, the four of us who put this together spent a lot of time looking at what to include, what not to include. And we know that, you know, four of us cannot completely cover the full uh, technology ins and outs. So that's why we're working with the tag groups now on that. Um, I'm going to skip this because what I want to do is just quickly show you kind of where the maturity model sits and we'll share these links. Um, I can share them in the chat in a moment, but we have a GitHub repo where we have the, the prologue of explaining how we went about this, what we did, um, some prerequisites. So we basically looked at it and said, look, you have to, you know, don't come to this unless you've decided cloud native is the way to go. And we gave you some, um, you know, when is the right time around the key four themes. And then for each one of the areas, we have like the people section, which gives you, okay, what do you need to do at each level? So here's your high level overview for people. And then we broke this out into themes as we built the model. So like there was an organizational change, what you have to do with your teams, how you need to incorporate developer agility, upskilling developers, security, et cetera. And we did mention some of the CNCN certificates you can have here. Um, the process- just, um, Sorry, real quick. Um, your audio sounds really strange to me. I don't know if it's just me or if I'm just getting that. Sounds a bit sort I keep getting a message that says my internet's unstable. So that's just poor timing, unfortunately. <laughs> but but actually, I think everyone gets that message. I think it's a thing with this platform. I, um, I can hear you fine, actually. No, okay. I'm all right. Okay. Must, must be me, in fact, because you all sound like that to me. Carry <laughs> on. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no problem. So in the process again, and you'll see like some of these are weighted heavier than other, depending on the content we had and, and what we were doing. So process follows it. We go through audit logs, CICD, change control, et cetera. And then policy. And I'll just click on technology to give you an overview of that. So, you know, we put up front that it is only graduate or incubating projects. We give you an overview. We talk about infrastructure, application patterns, and refactoring, container runtime, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, and this is where, you know, we put it in GitHub because we want people to contribute. We want to make sure that it is useful to the end user community because we want it to be 
guidance to help when you are navigating this journey. Um, and that, that's essentially our quick, very quick summary of the cloud native maturity model. We didn't want to, we didn't want to kill you with, uh, with slides. So we thought we'd give you an overview and then see what sort of questions you have, or if there's, you know, ways that you think this would be useful for your group for, you know, how we could promote it and expand it outside of this group. Go from there. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, anyone has questions already or comments? Feel free to speak up. I don't, uh, yeah. Well, if not, I can start. So I think one, one thing that uh, I was thinking while seeing your presentation before and now as well is um, like navigating towards a goal, I guess, like the different, different people will have different needs uh, of which components they need and how they fit together for the, the purpose that they want to to achieve but like for for is the is, is it dedicated per community or do you see more like a general uh guidance uh, we would see at, at the moment at, at the level that it's at it's um aimed at the general community uh because uh, and part of the challenge is is that we we're, we're well aware that uh every industry is different so the needs that you have within research will be quite different to the needs of, of finance, potentially, depending on what they're working on. I, I am aware there are similarities, actually, with HPC there. So, so that, that's one of the things. Um, however, one of the intentions of the model also is that while it is, is general, it is a resource that is there and potentially um, should you wish to um, fork it and or create create your own model that is better suited to specific parts of research then we really encourage that and indeed in turn we would really welcome we would love to see what you're doing with it so that we can again feed, feed that back and where we might find where there might be value for you is we've um, we've drawn out the the key area the four key areas as we know that cloud native migration transformation whatever you want to call it is more than just the technology decision so there's something there and another aspect that could be helpful for you too is the baselines that we have those five levels and feedback that we've had from from another tag has been that that what they liked was having the potential to use it as a common baseline and that that could be helpful for you as well and i definitely see it as an opportunity for different groups to say we created this supporting paper this supporting link like we created this content out here to help and so we link to it throughout the cloud native maturity model. So if you're saying we really think this should be included, we can highlight it and go, this is a supporting resource, which you should read because it talks about X. So we want to use it as a way to cross pollinate, pollinate all of the like deep, rich content that everybody is producing in their groups. At some point we started looking at, uh... Um, I, I don't remember how we called them, but it, it was like architecture best practices, which was more on the technical side of uh, how things should fit together. But uh, yeah, I think the, what you described with policy, people, all of this is also extremely important. So, and that was our big takeaway because we could have done a maturity model on technology and just called it a day. But when we looked at it, it was like, there's more to this whole space because you are changing you're changing everything to go cloud native. Maybe not everything, maybe that's extreme, but you're changing a lot. So, you know, make sure you're thinking about these things as you go along the journey. 
So if we consider that an organization or um, might want to, you know, if you make sure that you take account of your policy environment from the beginning, don't forget about it. Um, there's, we've seen situations where some of those key areas have not been given the level of thought out front, and that's made meant that people have had to go back and retrofit or attempt to cater for something and, and waste time and resources. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, just at what point in the process would you advise people to connect with your group? Or, or I'm still quite, not quite sure about the interaction with mm -hmm. the cartographer's group and what that's expected. Because we, we have a project that we're signing the sandbox, but at what point reach out to, do we go to meetings? Like what's the relationship? So we don't want to cause more work for your group. So we're happy to join meetings where it makes sense for you. But in addition, we meet um, every other week on a Tuesday um, at one Eastern. Um, and we have we have a bevy page two on it. So that's where we're talking about next steps. What do we want to do? How do we want to get people involved? Um, so you're welcome to join our calls. We're happy to come back. We um, we have one tag who's going away, think, going through all of the content, and they're going to come back and either comment via, you know, make some pull requests via GitHub and trying to update the content, and that's how they want to do it. Um, but we're completely flexible in that we want contributions and we want additional people to join our group, but at the same time, we don't want to make more work for anyone. So, um, Simon, do you want to? Add yeah. anything to that? Yeah, I would say also uh, quite simply, um, we're on we're on we're on Slack. We're pretty easy to find. We're all listed there individually, and also uh, our emails there. And what I would suggest is we're really keen to to engage, and so um, I wouldn't leave it. So if you've got a project that you're considering contributing, while while um, part of the the reason why at this time our focus is really on the the graduated and the incubating projects is because of the the number of projects and i get and perhaps because this is a relatively general model we know that the incubating and the graduated projects uh, you know pe people are not really going uh, less likely to to sort of go go wrong with those however if we um this landscape is changing really quickly and so if you if you want to say hey danielle hey simon john hey everybody we've we've got this project with um just be aware of it keep it on your radar if that's all it is we're we're, we're happy for for that as well yeah yeah appreciate it awesome uh, anyone has any other questions? Jamie, do you have any comment? Don't. My internet's a little bit dodgy, so I'm sort of coming and going. I'm sorry. I'm sitting on a 4G connection here. Yeah, I think I think this this is really like something that we should look at to to build, like Daniel was saying, to take it as a baseline and and build on top and then see where we could contribute. I think one one thing. I was just checking the agenda from the past, and we do have quite a lot of projects that come into our agenda that are yeah. in early stages of uh, of development or integration into the CNCF. So we also have like the ones from incubation and and, and yeah. uh, graduation that everyone depends on. As Alex said, like the, there's quite a bit that is in earlier stages of uh, integration. Yeah, uh, Matthew. Yeah, uh, it's, um, just to have, just, I guess, one thing I understand, like, whom I'm talking to, but is that in discussing any cloud native technologies, it's as a means to manage existing local resources. So there's a lot of existing perspectives of cloud is over there rather than local here, 
and also a matter of I, it's I have bare metal slurm running. Why do I need to build up all of this additional architecture? And it's you wave at them that CNCF landscape, and they go, nope, no, that this is a waste of my time um, due to complexity and whatnot. And is that uh, how it's how you folks have pitched this as? Um, you know, you must fully transition into CNCF methodologies and whatnot. Is that? Do you have any recommendations on not how, how to not scare people off? It's just because there's a you know lot of work and some right skepticism, and it's with regards to using some of these technologies. You know, why not use OpenShift, um, OpenStack, rather than going, you know, Kubernetes management of stuff, you know? So I think there, um, we, so this maturity model, say I was an OpenShift user or moving to OpenShift, I could use this maturity model as a baseline. I just wouldn't necessarily look at every single technology project. And one of the things that we did recognize in this is that you know, you might take one application and you're containerizing and you're adopting cloud even you're doing all that, but the rest of it, you're using bare metal, you're on-prem, whatnot, you're only doing that for one part. So your maturity might be at level five for an app. And then, you know, the re you're doing everything else. So you can be at different stages of the model, depending on what you're doing. But it's, it, you know, it's guidelines, it's helpful. It's not supposed to be prescriptive because if you read this and you go, oh, this is exactly the way the CNCF says to do it. Like everyone's going to debate that. Like you might read it, Matthew, and go, I, I would do this way earlier. And, you know, Ricardo, you might be like, no, 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 it's in exactly the right spot. And that's, you know, we're, we're trying to be helpful here and give some guidelines and guidance, but, um, and I think that the kind of other point is if you are not bought in to doing any cloud native, you probably aren't going to need this maturity model, right? right. There is a prerequisite or prologue yeah. that says you've decided as an organization that this is the right thing for you. Mm -hmm. I think, I think actually, uh, Matthew, the, that question you bring up is a question we should talk about as part of this group just in general you know, the, the high performance computing batch scheduling universe has skepticism about Kubernetes, just like you're saying, but that's, yeah, to Daniel's point, um, uh, like th this tool of uh, cartographers is, is maybe after you've decided to, to bite the bullet and go into it, but, but we should have that discussion separately about, you know, there's all this entrenched uh, opinions about how you should do batch scheduling uh, and how you should do, how you should set up clusters for research. And you're right, people look at Kubernetes and get scared off. Um, so that, so my, my apologies for that's asking that's a sort of meta question in, yeah. a, in a guidelines talk, but it's, it's to be like, you know, I, I'm interested in playing, playing around with the systems as in investigating certain things, but is that it's just a matter of like, okay, it's, and I have no opinion on, you know, what goes where if it's in the overall guidelines thing, but as I'm just sort of thinking, okay, yeah, some of this might work, but it's always a, okay, how, always in the back of my head, how the hell do I, how the hell do I sell this to others? And it's, yeah. and uh, the, it's having guidelines of, you know, this isn't, we move over in, you know, five days, you know, and it's, you know, go, go and install and, build it up and we're all done it's a process over time is is definitely valuable but material so well and one of the reasons i was brought into this group was because i posted a blog around the business outcomes you can expect of cloud native maturity um and that's where when cheryl hung was at still at the cncf she was like hey can you join this group because we looked at that so one of the things we are looking to do in our next iteration of this is to include those business outcomes because it is going, well, hey, I'm a technologist and I want to use this technology because it looks cool and fun, but does it support the business goals? Is that what the leaders want? And how do you communicate to 
you know, your CEO, your CFO that doing this is going to help move the business forward. And so, you know, I can I can dig out that blog and shoot you the link to it. But that is definitely something we want to get into the maturity model in the next iteration. And um, a really valuable point as well. And something that occurred to me is, um, as you were speaking, Matthew, was um, I think I really like the point you raised, actually. And I, I think it's actually a really important part of this discussion. Um, and um, some of the, the benefits might le might be less around, um, for example, if you've got a, an, an on-premise HPC cluster that's on bare metal and works incredibly well, uh, some of the other some of the points that we've attempted to address are things like security and around policy and what's running on the cluster. How um, how am I ensuring that only the workload that should be on there is there, and that I'm not uh, Bitcoin mining inadvertently on there? So um, also um, it, around, also around potentially what processes can we undertake to speed up releases on, onto that platform? So while the the platform itself may be on premise maybe within an organization and not be within a cloud service provider and may not even use kubernetes itself it, it might open up a space for for the further discussion around um, how's my policy looking um how do i start how do i move down down that journey and how can i provide the insurance so we're not spending money unnecessarily yeah so that's uh, an element where perhaps the other three areas may benefit or, uh, organizations as well. Um, actually working with a um, with an organization migrating a grid actually at this point in time to uh, from off premise to cloud service providers and undertaking refactoring as well. So it, it's been a really, you know, to um, to run on Kubernetes, and that's been a fascinating exercise to, to be working on. So, yeah, appreciate that. I think Ricardo's actually had to drop off uh, for some childcare issues, so I'm going to try and take over hosting, uh, despite my internet not being great. So, sorry if I drop off. Um, do we have any further questions? On the chat again. Simon and I can add in our chat our emails. So if you do have questions afterwards or want to follow up with us, and again, I put all the links in the chat as well to the content. So if you review it and you want to get involved with our group or you want us to come back or you want to talk about next steps one on one, we are happy to do that. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, as Alex mentioned earlier, we've got project we're sort of independently working on which uh, might be relevant here and um yeah if anyone else wants to please do that um but yeah there's no further questions and uh, thanks very much Simon and daniel really appreciate it thanks for your time thank you thanks for having us cheers thank, thank you for having us yeah very much appreciate it cheers and obviously you're welcome to join anytime you like we're here uh twice a month first and third wednesday of the month at this time time zones notwithstanding <laughs> Great. <laughs> yes, apologies for that on my part. No, I, yeah. Rick, Ricardo had a little dig at me because I've got a long track record of messing up time zones. I think because we're in London, I don't know about you, but half the time you're UTC and everything just works, and the other time, the other half you're not, and it makes it really hard. It's exactly right. I find, I have it, find exactly the same same thing. Yeah. yeah. Never write code in summertime. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, everyone else, I don't know um, if there's much more we've got to cover today. Um, we could just quick note that we'll be back here, um, I guess, let me have a quick look at the date. It's going to be on the 2nd of Feb, so two weeks today, and the topic is dealing with deprecations, so all the various things in the latest Kubernetes releases and other things uh, disappearing as time marches on. So if anyone has any other business, 
Quick Here's question. Uh, we, we didn't update the Google Doc with attendance. Should, do we still need to do that or should it be somewhere else? Good question. Yes, normally we do. Normally I would do that, but I don't have a laptop today, unfortunately. But yes, if you could, um, or in fact, Katarina, if you're there, if you wouldn't mind popping a link to the um, Google Doc in the chat, and then everyone can click that and just make a note of their, their name and where they're sure. from. And then we've got a record. That'd yes. be great. Thank you. Give me a hold, please. I'll do Cheers. And I think we're going to try and update any record of the Zoom link and make it be gone because I think we had a few people turn up there at the beginning and then come over to uh, Bevy afterwards. Here's worth um, adding your question as maybe a topic for discussion. I think it's a useful one to come back to in this group particularly. Yeah, I'm 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 good with that. But this uh, um, yeah, I, it's I inhabit a it's as a software engineer at a, at a university centralized group. I inhabit a weird nether space between a bunch of the computing design paradigms. So getting some sense on how to talk to people about different ones is would be useful. Yeah, I think winning people over in the HPC space is a complicated process. I've got uh, Jamie and Ricardo and I have been to chat with uh, some HPC people in Boston tomorrow, tomorrow, something like that. Um, and you know, similar uh, emotions, as you described, from that community. And uh, so anyway, it, it's just interesting, it, an interesting conversation to keep on bringing up in this group particularly, because I think this group is a lot of people like you who deal with a lot of um, historical entrenched and working systems. And should they move to Kubernetes? What, what's the big idea? What, why, why do this thing? Um, so I, I would love that topic to keep on coming back up. The, the other thing, uh, it's, you know, sorry to somewhat take a little bit of this is, um, mm -hmm. Uh, is that I originally come from the high throughput computing space. So is that I'm also learning the history of HPC. Uh, I'm currently based in the UK um, and trying to learn the, the history of the various technologies and preferences and whatnot. So is that there is some overlap of my boosterism of containerization and distributed computing uh, to cloud perspectives, but um, is that you know in other technologies is somewhat different, but I'm effort through the UK RSC group and some other orgs trying to get at least a little bit of dialogue in Slack channels to be like, because everybody has somewhat of a habit of siloing themselves off, you know, you know, with its communities build up their tools, their expertise, and it and it makes perfect sense. But is that it's I do wish we'd be a little bit more familiar and and it's sort of at ease in talking to each other rather than say, you know, defensive and or evangelistic. What do you mean? That, we love talking to people. <laughs> um it's it's more more it's the the, the frustrations of um and it's like HPC, well, most of my experience is talking to HPC folks who are profoundly skeptical. And is that a previous conversation I had with, um, oh goodness, I can't remember who was on the, the, um, the, the working group Slack channel was people should come to KubeCon. And is this to be like, well, yeah, but is also a matter of, you know, it's, it'd be good to meet people where they are, not necessarily just invite them to where you are already. And is that it's, I grant that there is a lot of going and talking to people, it's about stuff, but just the interactions is often, you know, come to me. Um, I don't know if there are regular, like, is there, um, visits to, uh, ICS or ISC or SC? for this research group, you know, at a particular time, um, or one of the, or PERC, um, or various other things. It's just a matter of, you know, 
go meet the people where they are uh, and it's as well as invite folks to come see the cool stuff that you have in your garage um, and it's it's not just you know disparage the active efforts it's just i think that would be just useful as well maybe that's just also my corner of southwestern england that i'm that i get that and it's it's not the case in other locations no i think it's i think you're accurate um i mean the hpc community i think is absolutely uh, so a very very specific group of people you know, you know yes i think they're siloed off into their own little universe for various reasons so but i'm not quite sure what you were suggesting in terms of connecting with well people. it's it's just like um people who can come to tutorial workshops and it's of in a bunch of this stuff this wonderful group is that has there been this working group hosting a booth or a workshop at a major hpc conference just as uh, oh, off the top I of see. my head yeah, this isn't uh, you know a so, you know so. perfect solution but is yeah, that yeah. this this is you know a we're not scary here's the cool stuff while you're yeah. going around looking at the 512 core processor thingies you know yeah, out yeah, totally, by totally. I, I see what you're saying. Um, Jamie, have, we've never discussed that as part of this working group, I don't think, have we? But it might uh, be interesting to to think about it. I mean, we're often at other conferences besides the CNCF stuff, so maybe we should think about going as emissaries of this research user group, getting a booth and, and doing that kind of a thing. Um, yeah, we've, we've only ever done that at KubeCon from memory. Yeah. Um, it would be good to go off to some of the other conferences and spread the word a bit more. Yeah, and I wonder whether, um, uh, what's his name again? Is Cheryl's um, replacement? Uh, uh, Bill Mulligan. Bill, I, I thought there was another person, Abu, or some, uh, I, I, I forget his first name. I thought Bill was mm -hmm. stepping in. Wow. Says, could that be Ehor Dvoretsky? No, I know who you mean. It's our current CNCF rep, I think, is he is looking at. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Aboub, I think, is his. Uh, I think it's Abdu. I, I can't Abdu? Okay. Yeah. Um, anyway, I wonder whether any one of those characters can help us with um, funds and things like that for setting up booths at other places. Um, we can get into those details, but it's a good idea, um, mm -hmm. especially on the things that we already plan to attend, um, any one of us. Mm -hmm. On that front, are you headed to any of those things? Uh, so are, it's, I, mean, it's, I am, I, I am, you know, poor at a new, at a new group. Um, but it's that I'm, you know, in my own little corner is that I'm going to be running a workshop, a small workshop next year. Um, and it's not nearly as you know, big conferences. But one of the things I'm thinking about was to make it both appealing. It's in high throughput, but is that to make it appealing to both HPC and cloud folks as well in terms of administration, in terms of relevant maybe CNCF technologies that are applied to high throughput computing. Mm -hmm. So is that it's just been on my mind about you know how can I how can I one sell my meeting outside our normal bubble, and also, I think it could be potentially really advantageous to just be melodramatic to go into enemy territory. Um, and it's and and is that to re to really say hey, you know no we are people like you, you know we have on premises we work with commercial cloud providers this is how we manage our stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, I think it's good actually. Um, it's, I would li I would like to be able to go to say one of these uh, to say ISC, but uh, sadly my current work schedule does not <laughs> does not allow it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, maybe let's let's keep that on as like a standing item to keep on talking about because I think mm -hmm. for this group, uh, you know, we we want to be reaching out to more people and in particular sort of. Uh, interdisciplinary realms because uh, for this group in particular that's important so 
it's wonderful that you bring it up. Let's keep mm -hmm. on talking about it. Mm -hmm. well, thank you for being accepting of that. No, I think it's great. Um, cool. Right on. I think that's it. Anybody else? Albin? Timothy? Final call. Oh, no, just hanging in the background. Cool, cool. Nice to see you, though. <clears throat> cool. All right. Well, we'll probably wrap it up there then. Thank you all for joining and uh, see some of you in a couple of weeks. And thanks again for presenting, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Pleasure. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you all. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Hopefully, meet you all soon. Bye bye. Yes. Yeah. Bye.